Alrighty, in today's video we're going to be going over nested if formulas in Notion. And so I went ahead and created this basic timesheet database with these four properties, a checkbox property, and two number properties that are going to signify increments of time in which we're going to use the relationship between these two numbers to create an output. And this output is just a formula field, and let's get started. The reason why I chose forecasted time and time inputted is because we can all sort of connect and create relationships based on time. And I think um, there's a tremendous opportunity to weave in and track your time within Notion. And you can also go that much further by creating strategic Notion outputs that will help you do more and also simplify perhaps some of the ways in which you might think about your forecast and your actual time. And let's begin by, by creating that basic relationship where if the time input is greater than the forecast, right? You spend more time than you've wanted to on the task, you want more time forecast. If not, we're gonna just leave it blank for now. We're gonna slowly iterate on this, because again, nested formulas I think are best created when you slowly add the conditions and you're able to understand the logic behind it as you type it out. So in this case, because the done is blue and we can accept it, I'll we'll do that. And let's do an example. So forecast is 15 and time input is bigger than that. Boom. So now we have this output. You log more time than your forecast, right? That's clear. And now let's go a little further and add the difference in time input and forecast, right? And we're going to go ahead and use the concat formula, strings, text, and numbers together. And we're going to use the format so that we can format the number into a text once we take that difference. So because time input's going to be bigger than forecast, we want a positive number. So it's going to output that concat using those numbers. Change this text to by. Close that out. Parentheses, comma. Notice how it's done now. Now we can click on done. Output looks good. Oh, it looks like there's a missing space. This is a very common thing that we encounter, and that is just when you forget to add a space between your concat formula and, and the quotation marks. Keep that space. So if you do that, done. So now it's not only telling you that you've logged your time more than your forecast, but by how much. Let's take it up another step. What if we reverse that order, right? What if the forecast was larger than the time input? And so how can we account for this in a single formula field? We can do so by creating a nested if formula. And this is where you can sort of micromanage all your possible outcomes between Notion properties and then strategically create a formula to output what you need to know based on that relationship. And so in this case, let, let's make it so that if the forecast is less than the time input, let's output something. So in this case, we're now another if prop right? If the forecast is greater than, then we're going to want to probably spit out you or below your forecast. And if otherwise, it is, let's keep it blank. And now we have added that option where if forecast is greater than time input, again, you can manually do this or you can copy paste it, whatever you want. I want to say you were under forecast time, right? So if your forecast is greater than your time input, we want to say you were under forecasted time. And then if the time input is greater than the forecast, we want to do this alternative action. The key with the nested if functions is to add if not true option. And when you stack the formulas like that, it makes it easier so that if you do add the if fun formula in front of what's pre-existing, you can actually just add to what you've already created. And I think we can just add that second parentheses at the very back of the formula. So now both of these are nested, the done appears, and we can accept that change. Let's test it out. What if, let's reverse it, so 17 and 15. Boom, you were under forecasted time. So now we've basically created two outputs that accounts for these differences if input is higher than forecast, and if forecast is higher than input, right? Look how easy that was. Very simple nested formula. Now let's add that same concat formula, and this is where it gets a little more interesting, right? Because we can almost just copy paste this whole concat 
variation and then replace it with the supporting text we created. So notice if I paste it, it still accepts. We can do that, but now we have to switch the text and now we have to switch the calculations. So we want to subtract forecast from time input, right? And we're, you logged less time than your forecast by, right? So now if you do done, we basically just did the same thing, but we reversed it, right? And we changed some of the language, so more is less. Same calculations, but we reverse the order because we don't want negative minutes in our output. So now if it's blank, nothing shows. Your forecast is greater than input. Boom. You log less time than your forecast by eight minutes. Let's reverse it. And then you logged more time than your forecast by eight minutes here. So pretty powerful stuff, All right, The nested if function is pretty helpful in that sense. Now let's create some other options, right? You know, we're not always going to be able to record our time, so it might be empty. And we might not always be able to record our forecast. So let's create some entries, perhaps, where forecast is, has text and input doesn't, and vice versa, where forecast doesn't have text and input does have text. Both of these have to be filled for us to output. We're going to need to create another nested if function to account for these other properties being empty. So again, we can just go to the very front of this formula field and start with another if function, right? And we're going to use that empty function. So if empty, start with the forecast, then we want to spit out an output, right? Your forecast is empty, right? We want to notify the user that you need to include a forecast or else we can't run a calculation. And again, because this is a nested if function, we're going to add that parentheses, And that close quotation mark to get that blue symbol to pop off and click on done. Bam. So now we've added three different options. One where forecast is less than input, one where input is higher than forecast, and one where forecast is empty. Right? So let's go ahead and do the same thing with time input, right? Let's go a little further. So if this is where you can copy paste, right? If empty. Pop. Close parentheses, very important. Let's, we're going to want an output. You need time, right? We can add that comma. We can add that close parentheses at the end. Bam. It's blue. Accept. Wow. So because we've had these properties already configured the way that we wanted it, now we have these status properties appear appropriately. Look how we have four inputs in one formula property. It's not a whole lot of text, right? And I hope the way that I explain it to you is intuitive so that you can sort of iteratively add more if functions and then you're able to close it out and create these optionalities for this output property. Okay, we just added four different statuses using the same formula property. How about we go a step further by integrating this complete checkbox property so that if it is complete, then we spit out these else. So we can go ahead and do that by adding that AND function. And I think the key here is we only want to spit this output out for these calculated minutes if it's complete, right? In theory, if it's not marked as complete, then show blank is sort of the sort of what we're going for here. So we can go ahead and do that by saying including in our nested ifs where AND not empty. What that is basically says is we're only going to show the output if complete is marked. And we're going to just copy paste that same thing, that same logic in the second set. So when we click on done, these are all gone. Right? And the moment you click on complete, you start to see these outputs. Pretty simple stuff, right? Even if you do complete here, these don't change because this is nested after these empty property formula functions. I think that's a pretty great intro into nested formula. I think we can go even further and with even more logic and more properties. And I think I'll have more of those examples in a future video. But I hope that this nested if formula tutorial helps you understand how to sort of organize some of the properties that you might be using in
in your notion of workspace. Really appreciate all of the support that I've been getting on the channel. Would really appreciate if you could subscribe as well. That allows me to keep going and never look back. I've been really enjoying this so far and appreciate all the comments. Thanks for watching.